want to do a quick tutorial on how to set up a no added input delay uh, workflow for working with Zoom. And just off the top, I want to clarify that when I say no added input delay, I'm talking about on your side, on the user side. So as you're playing either a synth patch or you're playing the guitar, you know, no matter what you're playing, you won't have any input delay. There's still obviously going to be an input delay between what you hear and what your friend on the other side of Zoom hears. That's just natural with the internet. So this is not a how to have band practice over Zoom or anything like that. This is for having a session, you know, you guys both have the same session. You can, you know, use Google Drive or whatever, opening it up and just messing around, writing stuff, coming up with ideas. That's what this is about. So by default, you'd come over here to Zoom, you would do a new meeting. When you share your screen, you would have to do share computer sound. And then from that, within your DAW, you have to use Zoom's audio device. So you come in here and you would use the Zoom audio device. And the problem with that is that you have to you have to monitor that and you have an input delay, which makes it virtually impossible. Let's say you're playing a guitar or something. It's it's just ridiculous. <laughs> like it's it it's very difficult to be creative when there's very noticeable input delay. So my buddy and I were trying to come up with a way we had all these crazy solutions of using outputs on our interface, routing back into inputs on our interface, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The whole goal was to have Zoom hear the outputs of your DAW as your microphone. Because obviously, you know, if you're on a Zoom call, you don't even need to be sharing your screen. Your microphone just gets transmitted, but you don't hear it. You don't hear a talk back or you don't hear any kind of delay when you're talking because it just, it goes in, you're not monitoring it, it goes through, it, it all works fine. So what we come up, what we came up with was this piece of software called Virtual Audio Cable. Just do a simple Google search. It's very easy to find. Do a quick installation. It's not, it's not even an application that has to be running. It just, it runs in the background. And what it does is it routes audio. There's other programs that do this as well. My buddy's using a program called, I think, Black Hole, something or other. But it routes audio from one program to another. So you can set the output of one program to the input of something else. Now, obviously, with the DAW, there's a bit of a, a catch because to route audio, you have to be using these you know, audio devices. So you can't just set the output of your DAW to the virtual audio cable, which is this right here because then you you know you wouldn't be getting any sound out of your monitors right you're not you're not routing anything through your interface to hear it so the workaround is to go into your applications go down to utilities and open up the audio midi settings and you set up this aggregate device just add one down here this is the exact window that pops up you're going to set your interface as the first um, the first thing that you select make sure that on both of these, make sure that your clock source is your interface. And then on the virtual audio cable, you're gonna set up drift correction for that. And that is essentially it. So now what it has done is it has created another audio device. And you'll see here that the VB cable, the virtual audio cable has two inputs and two outputs. So now in your DAW, you set up your output device as this aggregate device. You could also name it. I probably need to go in there and do that. So it, you know, it's kind of a weird name, but you can name it. So set up your aggregate device as your output. So now, so what that is, is that is your interface and the virtual audio cable together. And by default, I don't know if you can change it, but by default, so my, I have a Focusrite um, 2i4, as you can see up here. It has, you know, two sets of stereo outputs. So it has four outputs. It will add the virtual audio cable as outputs five and six. So what, however many outputs your interface has, the next two, like so it's, it's gonna increase that by two and those last two are virtual audio cable. So those outputs are then routed as an input to virtual audio cable. It's kind of a weird thing to wrap your brain around, but I promise it works. <laughs> um, so you set the output as this aggregate device. Now, I had a weird thing my buddy was using this other thing called black hole audio or something like that. And he did not have this problem, but if I set both my input and output device as the aggregate device, 
you'll see in a minute the routing I'm doing in the mixer, but I had a loop back. Like I could hear uh, two things. Like an, there was like a slap back delay. So I had my input device is just my interface and the output device is the aggregate. So now I will show you the routing in the mixer. So I have everything routed. Um, these aren't because I'm doing a little a weird kind of thing with these, but every track is routed to a bus. Bus, I think it's 255. I, I named it. You can, in Logic, you can, I'm sure you can do it in Everyday W, but you know, you can name them. So I named this bus master. So, but anyway, I'm routing every single track to a bus. That bus is over here. So every single thing is being routed into this bus. And this bus is being routed to my stereo output right here. And then I also set up another auxiliary channel and it is getting the, every, it's everything is being routed through that same channel, right? That same bus, it's going through the master bus, bus 255. It's coming into this auxiliary channel and its outputs are outputs five and six. Now, again, my interface doesn't have outputs five and six. This is the virtual audio cable. So everything in my session is getting routed both to, right, these two right here, which are my monitor, my, my, my interface, so I can hear that through my monitors, and these auxiliary channels, which are the outputs that are going to virtual audio cable, right? It's, I know it's a little weird. <laughs> and then also, right, you have to have a, a talk back because otherwise people won't be able to hear you talk. Um, so then the, the magic is when you come to Zoom, go to preferences, you set your microphone to the VB cable. Now this is important. You do not set it to the aggregate device, right? The aggregate device just combines the two. So you're sending, you really only need the aggregate device for in your DAW because you're sending all the audio to the aggregate device. And then that aggregate device is pumping it through VB, uh, the virtual audio cable. You then just set the input of virtual audio cable to your microphone or I'm sorry, you set the, your microphone in Zoom to the virtual audio cable. And now, as you can see, I'm talking and, you know, you can hear, you'll be able to hear it in Zoom. But then also, more importantly, I come into Logic. see I wasn't talking or anything and the output of my DAW all the sound that my DAW is making via this bus right here and then going to these outputs is being pumped right into zoom as a microphone so I don't hear this I don't hear this output here I only hear my stereo output so I, there's absolutely no additional latency I mean obviously whenever you're working with audio, I mean, I'm, I'm at 128 samples. So there's no perceived latency and this adds no additional latency. I'm just monitoring my stereo outputs. I hear no additional latency. I can play all my synth patches. I can play the guitar. I can yodel, whatever I want to do. I have no additional latency and that audio is being pumped to my buddy across the planet via zoom. And obviously, you know, it takes it a second to get there, but that, that doesn't matter. You, I'm playing, he hears it, he gets ideas, he plays. We send each other files back and forth constantly via Google Drive. And it, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's never going to be as nice as sitting in the room together, but this has, this has been amazing for collaborating, getting rid of that input delay. So I know I rambled. I've never made a YouTube video before, so hopefully this was helpful and uh, talk to you guys later.